We've told you repeatedly on this show that the threat from Chinese espionage to this country is real and it's ongoing. And by the way, it dwarfs by a magnitude of a lot any threat posed by Russian espionage, not even close. Well, in the past few days, we've received new evidence of that threat. On this Saturday, the FBI arrested former U.S. intelligence officer Ron Rockwell Hansen as he was about to fly to China. The DOJ says that Hansen was paid at least $800,000 to pass Amer American military secrets to the Chinese government. These charges come less than a month after former CIA operative Jerry Chung Sing Lee was formally accused of helping destroy America's spy network in China. China has the motive, the money, and the means to spy aggressively on the United States and does and has for years. Meanwhile, our leaders, who are hapless and dishonest, prefer to harp on about Russian Facebook ads. Will Congress ever act in response to this threat? We recently spoke to Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio. Watch. America's trade deficit with China is more than $300 billion every single year. One of the biggest losers from that is America's industrial heartland. According to a 2017 report by the Economic Policy Institute, the state of Ohio alone has lost 121,000 jobs since 2001 just due to the China trade deficit. That state, not surprisingly, also has a very high rate of opioid abuse. The two may be connected. President Trump has pushed to alter America's trade relationship with China. Should Democrats back him? Congressman Tim Ryan is a Democrat who represents the Mahoney Valley of Ohio, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Ralph. 121,000 jobs just in your state since 2001. Yeah. That seems like a crisis, like a huge story. Why is that not discussed more in Washington? Do you I, think? Think, I think in a lot of ways it's a regional issue. It's, it hit manufacturing harder than anyone else because a lot of the manufacturing moved first to Mexico, then to China and other yes. Asian countries. And so it, it hit the heartland the hardest. Those industrial states around the Great Lakes states was you know, all of a sudden competing directly with China and a couple bucks an hour wages and not those good union wages we had in the, in the Midwest. When China was admitted to the WTO, I remember very well a bipartisan chorus telling us that it would not kill American jobs. Everything was going to be fine. It was all upside. And of course, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of American jobs were destroyed by that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the people who lied about that should be held to account at some point, somehow? Well, I mean, you know, th these were people in positions of power. And I think for, for many corporations, it was very, very good. All of a sudden, uh, you don't have those legacy costs. You're not paying a union wage, you're paying someone cheap and you ship the product back. So right. there was that sweet spot where the corporations were doing really, really well under that scenario. And so that's why you see a huge concentration of wealth now. Those jobs primarily, I'd say, were almost all union wage, union pension, right. union health care, lifted up communities. And those were people who voted for school levies, voted for police and fire levies, because it, mental health levies, library levies, because they had enough money to support the community. And, and so now we've got to figure out what we're going to do with globalization and automation. And that's why I think a lot of those corporations, we need to figure out how they have to reinvest back into these communities, not just in the United States, but back into these communities. But those corporations, a lot of them are not American. They don't think of themselves as American. They're global companies. Mm -hmm. They have global shareholders. They don't feel a responsibility to the communities that gave birth to them. Right. What do you do about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can always force people to do things. I think the government has a responsibility to create incentives and do two things. One, you got to prepare these communities to accept the private investment. The government can't do everything, but it can help with broadband, a new energy grid, walkable communities in our downtown. So young people want to be in those places that have river walks, amphitheaters, those kinds of things. If you're doing the energy grid, if you're doing broadband, those are jobs that can't be outsourced to China. So a massive public works program to get those people that are 45, 50 years old back to work into, with a good retirement into the yeah. Medicare system. The longer term plan, and this is my big beef with, with what we're doing in the country, the longer term plan is how do you get private capital invested in the communities like ours. And I was on your show a few months ago where we took venture capitalists from Silicon right. Valley, got them on a bus, and we went to Youngstown, Ohio, Akron, Flint, Detroit, and South Bend, Indiana. And, and trying to connect the ideas percolating out of these communities and get private investment behind them. There are ideas in these communities. Startups are the number one uh, way to grow businesses 
almost all new biz, almost all new job growth in America right. comes from startups. So we've got to invest in these communities and get the startup community. This should be a startup nation. That's one way to do it. Yep, caring is the first step, and, and, and I'm glad. I'm I'm glad that you do. Let me, if I could just say quickly. Yep. China has a 10-year plan. 30-year plan, 50-year plan, 100-year plan. America, we live in a 24-hour news cycle. Yeah, I know. And that's why they're cleaning our clock. Their military, political, and economic structure is all pushing in the same direction. In America, we're divided. We've got to come together, find some common ground, so we can get to some higher ground and start getting some stuff done. Ours is a country run by day traders. I agree with yeah. you completely. Yeah. Congressman Ryan, thank you Thanks. very much. Thanks for having me.